Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials and today we are talking about contextual toolbars. So if you watch this channel, you know that I love my toolbars. Got a big one up here that's always visible. Got a few on the side here. And in fact, if I go to options and customize menus and toolbars, you will see that I have used almost all of my 16 toolbars. And there are also eight MIDI ones. So overall, we only have 24 to work with. And obviously having all my 12 toolbars in view the whole time is not very efficient with screen real estate. And while we do have hotkey to open and close them, you would need to occupy and then memorize, you know, up to 16 hotkeys, which may also not be very ideal. So how else can I access my toolbars when I need them without taking up a bunch of space in my screen sets or memorizing 16 hotkeys? Well, the answer to that is contextual toolbars. So I'll go to extensions and then contextual toolbars, and it will open this window right here. Here I can select certain toolbars from the column toolbar to open in the corresponding context next to them. So the benefit to that is that I can search for contextual toolbar in my action list and I can assign a single hotkey to open this toolbar and which toolbar this hotkey will open will depend on the position of my mouse. So for example, ruler, TCP, MCP, and so on. We have eight presets here as well, so that further expands your control on this stuff. But if all of this sounds confusing, I'm just gonna close this window for now and give you a demo of what this looks like when set up. So all the toolbars you're about to see have been explained in other videos. So just find links to those in the description. But to cut a very long story short, if I come up here to my ruler and hit Control and C, I'll open my time signature toolbar. This helps me quickly set specific time signature markers on my timeline. When I'm done, hit Control and C and the toolbar is gone. If I hover my mouse slightly above that and hit the same hotkey, I'll get my action markers toolbar where I can quickly insert action markers already set up with my most used actions. If I hover over a track on the TCP, this will open my effects toolbar where I have some of my often used plugins, which I don't use often enough to set a hotkey for, but I also don't want to keep searching for them. So again, I can open this toolbar with the same hotkey, select a track, click on any of these and they will be added to that track. If my mouse is over an envelope lane, I can get my automation toolbar. In my mixer area, I have another toolbar to show on high groups of tracks. And finally, if I'm over any item, this will open my takes toolbar for when I'm working with takes. So that's the gist of contextual toolbars. You get one hotkey, that one hotkey can open many different toolbars under your mouse cursor based on where your mouse cursor is. Capiche? So let's go back to the contextual toolbars menu and set this up. Obviously what you need to start is a bunch of toolbars you want to use this way. And that's really based on your workflow and preferences. So I'm not gonna get much into that. So for now, I'm just gonna select preset three from this dropdown menu. And in this blank preset, we will set up some criteria. So each of these options on the left is a context. And if I click on the toolbar column next to any context, I can assign a toolbar to that context. So I can set one toolbar to open when I'm on my ruler, or as you saw with my setup, I had time signatures open on my tempo lane. And then on the marker lane, I had my action markers. So I can just select those toolbars. Then I hit save down here. I'm gonna go to the actions list, look for contextual toolbars, and this time find preset three. And I'll just assign that to uh, control tilde, whatever. So now if I'm up here, I can hit the hotkey to open one toolbar. Slightly below that, I'll open another toolbar. Now one problem is by default, these toolbars will open right under my mouse cursor. And as you can see right here, they are kind of blocking my view of the timeline for me. So this is not ideal. Luckily, we can set a position offset for each of these toolbars, and this will be set in pixels and will be relative to your mouse cursor position. So I can double click this column next to the time signature toolbar, and I can set it to open 25 pixels to the right of my cursor and 150 pixels below my cursor. I'll hit OK, hit save below for the changes to take effect. And now as you can see, it opens here. And I think I still want it further down than that. So I'll just double click again, set this to 250, hit save, try again, and this looks okay. I can do all my work, hit the hotkey again, toolbar is gone. Same thing with this one. I'll set this to just be 250 pixels below the mouse. So overall positive X and Y values will put the toolbar to the right or below the mouse cursor and negative X and Y values will be to the left or above the cursor. Super simple. Take some time to calibrate these and Bob's your uncle forever. So that's the ruler done. And basically other contexts work the same way. You have one parent context, like below ruler, we have track control panel. So you can have one toolbar to open for anywhere on the TCP, like I have my effects toolbar. Every sub context to the TCP will just look at the parent context and open that toolbar. It won't matter if I'm in an empty area or on a track, wherever I am, the same toolbar opens. But if I want to, I can change this by double clicking them. I can set them to do nothing or I can set a specific toolbar for them. 
So maybe when I'm in the empty area, I can have it open toolbar 11. And now if I'm down here, I get toolbar 11. And if I'm anywhere else in the TCP area, I get my effects toolbar. Now on the right hand side here, we have some additional TCP based options. For example, I can also set it up. So when my mouse hovers over any track, hitting the hotkey will also select that track or adds that track to our current selection. So I have it select the track. And now when my mouse is here, I can hit the key. It'll open the toolbar, but also select that track. And I'll just click on any of these and boom, the plugin is loaded. If I want to select a bunch of tracks, I'll just do that after. And it's the same shtick with the mixer control panel. So maybe I'll set MCP to just open my automation toolbar, save it, go over to the mixer, hit the key and this will open. You can set offset values as usual and you also have some MCP based track selection options to the right hand side. Up top you have some additional options that apply to everything. I can have the toolbar always stay on top. To be honest, I don't know what this does because they are on top anyway. So if you know, put it in the comments. Setting toolbar to foreground on load will also focus the toolbar, which there's a really long winded explanation of what difference this makes. And I just kind of don't feel like going into it right now. So let me know in the comments if you're interested. You can also set them to auto close when you move away from them, but I just prefer to close them manually by hitting the hotkey again. And finally with items, you get lots of options based on what the item is or what's on it. So I can have my takes toolbar open on audio items. When it's MIDI, I can have it open MIDI toolbar five. When it's a video, I can open my video toolbar. And again, here you can specify with items to sell Select them if your mouse is hovering over a particular one. You can select the item and its track. You can add them to a selection. So let's just go select item, hit save. So if my mouse is over this thing, hitting the hotkey will select it and open my MIDI toolbar because this is MIDI. If I go down here to this audio item, it opens the take toolbar. And you can go super, super deep still, set extra ones for the take and track envelope lanes or specific lanes even. So for track envelopes, let's also choose the automation toolbar. And here again, I can set it to also select and focus that envelope. So for example, I got a couple of envelopes, hit the hotkey, it highlights that envelope and opens my toolbar. These settings on the right hand side basically can help save like an extra click or two. So you can set them up if you're inclined, but otherwise if you don't feel like it, don't even bother with them. It's really all about the left hand side. So that's it for today. If you like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. You can also now become a member of the channel and watch the video above or click the join icon below to find out more. All our donors and members get access to special perks and some exclusive content as well as project feedback from yours truly. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you tomorrow with a very special Ninjam stream. Adios muchachos.